Good morning. Welcome to Raleigh Court United Methodist Church on this wonderful Palm Passion Sunday. It's the day that sets us up for the coming events of this week. I'm Philip Waltz. I'm the interim pastor here at Raleigh Court. And on behalf of them, I want to thank you for taking some time to choose to worship with us. We'd like to know that you are with us, though. So if you're watching online, please comment or tag, share, like. Also, uh, there's a way to attend, uh, register your attendance at rcumc.org forward slash watch, or just email us at rcumc at rcumc.org. A couple of announcements for you today. One is we have a very significant event in the life of our community that's coming up this coming Friday on, uh, called Good Friday. At three o'clock, we're going to gather together and walk down the churches on Grandin Street. Um, we're going to join with six other churches that are all along Grandin Avenue and walk together remember, remembering the journey of Christ on Good Friday through the streets of Jerusalem on his way to his crucifixion and death. We're going to begin at 3 p.m. at Christ Lutheran, which is at the corner of Brandon Avenue and Grandin Ave Road. Brandon Avenue and Grandin Road, along with um, other masked and socially distanced members of Raleigh Court Presbyterian, Heights Community, Christ Lutheran, West Hampton Christian, and St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Churches. We'll carry the cross and we'll read scriptures and share prayers and sing hymns, all in remembrance of what Jesus suffered. It's a beautiful time to come together to remember what Jesus has done for you and me. Also make plans to come by the church next weekend on Saturday or Sunday to help us decorate the cross in celebration of our risen Lord. Along with the cross, we'll be building a tomb at our church entrance. And we're also going to have some lawn decorations that'll help to create a beautiful Easter photo for you and your family. And we'd like for you to share those photos on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, however you'd like. 
and add hashtag RCUMC Easter 2021. We have uh, several beautiful altar flower arrangements today. One in is, is in honor of Audrey Sisler, who leads our round table small group. So Audrey, thank you so much for your leadership. And the other is from Stephen and Deborah LeBron in honor of Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. And then also pleased to take some time to uh, review our additional announcements that you'll find on the digital church bulletin, which is found at our uh, rcumc.updates.church, or you can scan the QR code on the screen now. Well, my brothers and sisters, we have come here to praise God, to share our love with each other and with him, and to come closer to the one we claim, Jesus Christ. Let's worship. Good morning. Please join us in the call to worship. The Lord needs it and will send it back. Give up my horse? Are you crazy? I don't even know you. The Lord needs it and will send it back. Give up my cup of coffee in the morning to feed an orphan? Absurd. The Lord needs it and will send it back. Give up 10 minutes of my 24 hours to pray? I spend my time like my money any way I want. The Lord needs it and will send it back. You want my child? Call him into ministry? But my daughter's smart. Surely she can do something better than the ministry. The Lord needs it and will send it back. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave us our resources. God gave us our time. The Lord needs it and we'll send it back. Today we give. everyone mr. Eric here and I am downtown this morning and uh, this morning we are talking about Superman if you're like my kids you don't know much about Superman I had to explain to them that when I was a kid uh, Superman movies were, uh, were coming out and and Superman was like the hero that I identified with he was he was super cool uh, to me he could fly, he had a cape, he was super strong, he had laser beams that, that uh, came out of his eyes, and his breath would like freeze things. He had super cold breath, just really cool, but all of this was lost on my kids. So uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, so Superman lived in this city called Metropolis, and uh, by by day he was Clark Kent. He worked at the city newspaper and he was really unassuming. Just he would blend in in a crowd. Nothing really stood out about him. But if there was an emergency, if there was danger, he would zip into a phone booth or just step away from the crowd, turn into Superman and fly to the rescue. Now to me that was really cool. So as a kid, Superman was who I wanted to be. So imagine you're a kid in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago and one morning you hear this commotion. You hear people rushing to the streets. You hear the name Jesus. You hear shouts of Hosanna. And as you go towards the crowd, you see people waving palm branches. Right? You see them laying them down the road as Jesus' donkey walks down the street. And they're shouting these hosannas, and, and you've heard this name, Jesus, because 
you have heard that he has changed people's lives, that he has made the sick well, and, and maybe even that he has, has brought Lazarus back from the dead. And so you want to see him because you've wanted to be perhaps like him. And then as the week goes on, you see that the crowds have turned their cheers into jeers. And they're now wanting Jesus to be crucified. This is all because they don't understand what kingdom Jesus is talking about. That he's not talking about a kingdom here on earth, but he's talking about a kingdom in heaven. The kingdom of God, the kingdom that, that he came to bring when he came to earth. As today's scripture says that that he came, that God would come in the form of Jesus to, to live among us. And he lives among us to show us an example of what God's love looks like. And we've been talking about that for the last five weeks is, as we're everyday faith heroes, we are to continue God's story. We are to share that God is the source of goodness. We are to create community. We are to uh, serve others. We are to love others, and today we are to share that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord when we believe in all our hearts that He is God's Son, and that He has come to, to save us, and to give us that glimpse of what the Kingdom of Heaven is supposed to look like. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, it is Palm Sunday and we shout Hosanna, but we also know that this is a dark week that leads to crucifixion. But we also then know and are so thankful that that leads to the Easter resurrection. So Lord, as we hear the sounds of your, your creation around us, of life moving around us, we pray that you would help us to remember that you sent your Son to live among us, to teach us and show us what it means to love you and to live a life that is faithful to you. So help us to do that this Holy Week and bring us back next Easter, next week, so we can experience Easter and the resurrection celebration. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, God bless.
Greetings everyone on this Palm Sunday. Um, it's a day of celebration because our Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem ready to take care of the world, not in the way they hoped, but still to take care of the world. So this is our time of prayer. Um, we will adore God with adoration, then confess to him um, through confession. We will give our thanks for all of his blessings through thanksgiving, and finally um, pray all of our prayers of concern to him from our deep within our hearts through supplications. So may we bow now and pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who on this day received the worship of those who hailed you as their king, accept our praise and adoration, our worship and love. Grant that we who now confess you with our lips may never fail to give you the service of our lives for the honor of your holy name who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. We give you all our praise, O Christ. Now, as we bow our heads, we confess to you, Lord, through this prayer of confession. May we pray this together. Gracious God, we thankfully remember the life of our Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. Yet we also acknowledge our failure to respond earnestly and faithfully to his witness. We often mistake Jesus for a mere earthly king, friendly companion, or problem solver, failing to see him as the ruler of all creation. We do not appreciate the depth of his passion and sacrifice on the cross, failing to acknowledge him as our way of salvation. Even in this Lenten season, we have not walked faithfully in the way of Jesus Christ. Forgive us, we pray, and bring us ever more fully into the joy of union with you, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. We take this time now to thank you for our many blessings, either in spoken word or within our hearts, Lord. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving, O God. Most of all, O oh Christ, we thank you for riding the donkey into Jerusalem, even though you knew exactly what would be happening by the end of that week as you hung on the cross for our sins. We thank you so much for giving your all for us. And O oh Heavenly Father, there is much on our hearts and minds as the world looks like it's in such distress and we have family members who have great need or friends and we still battle this coronavirus Lord which is still taking lives hear now our prayers of supplication Lord either in our own hearts or with the spoken word. Hear our prayers, O Lord.
We know you have heard our prayers. And we thank you, O Holy Father, that you will answer these prayers in the right way and at the right time. Of that we are assured. And now let us pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, O Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Offering is a sacred act of worship. Through our tithes and offerings to our Lord, we are participating in the mission of God to transform this world. God's call to mission will continue. As you join in this time of offering, we invite you in offering through our online worship page. Go to www.rcumc.org forward slash give. You may also use our text giving option. Simply text GIVE and the amount to 540-579-5399. It will initially ask your credit card number, but after the initial setup, all you need to input is the amount. If you prefer to send your offering to the church, you may mail it or drop it off in the church mailbox. That is the brown mail drop box to the right of the entrance to the gathering area. During the month of March, we ask you to be a part of the love offering that will be directed to our pastor's discretionary fund. This fund provides resources to be distributed as needs arise for various people in our congregation and in our community. Please indicate love offering on your donation. Let us pray. Holy God, sovereign over power and pain, glorious triumph and deep disappointment, we enter this holy week bringing our tithes and offerings to your altar and leaving them here in the hope you will send them to make the world a more loving and compassionate place. We are reminded through the scripture that you sent two of your disciples out to make the world ready for your coming. Go into the village, find the donkey, tell them the Lord has need. Remind us that your kingdom breaks into the world, not as a spectacle for us to witness, but as a parade where we are called to make a working contribution. We pray in the name of the one who comes not just for the parade, but for the cross at the end of it. Amen. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from John 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Most of you have probably figured out by now that I'm a really big geek. I wear that name like a badge of honor because I've earned it. As a person who read the entire World Book Encyclopedia, including the annual Science and Yearbooks as a kid, I became the king of trivia. When I played Trivial Pursuit, I had to answer the whole card in order to be awarded just one of those little colored pie pieces. And I was one of those people who did pretty well playing along with Jeopardy. So when discussing our superhero for today, don't be surprised if you're going to be bombarded with some seemingly worthless facts. For example, did you know, and by the way, whenever you hear me say, did you know, Brace yourself for some answers to questions you've never asked. But did you know that one June in Metropolis, Illinois, that's the official hometown of uh, the superhero to be discussed here today, well, one year the organizers attempted to set a Guinness Book of World Records for the largest gathering of people dressed as Superman. Now, I want you to close your eyes for a moment and try imagining, picturing hundreds of people of different ages and different shapes, all dressed in spandex. While I've never worn that fabric, I can only imagine what I'd look like wearing it. Well, actually, I don't want to imagine what I'd look like wearing it. One Halloween when I was a kid, however, I did dress up as Superman. And I can even remember the warning label on the side of the package. Caution, do not attempt to fly. Now, I'd like to meet the kid who's innocent enough to think he could fly, but smart enough to check the warning label before he jumps off the roof. I, on the other hand, discovered the label after I jumped off the roof of our garage but no harm came to this dense little boy of steel. I share all this with you because I thought that now would be a perfect time to share a little of my geekiness with you. You see, I'm convinced that comic book heroes can teach us some valuable spiritual lessons. In fact, I like to think of the superheroes as modern-day parables. Jesus used parables. 
fictional stories to illustrate spiritual truths. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they could understand. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. So I, too, believe that the stories of comic book heroes like Batman and Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, Iron Man, and Captain America can help us better understand some very biblical concepts. On each of the Sundays of Lent, I've shared some of those stories with you. And today, end with the first and the greatest comic book hero, Superman. Superman has been saving the day since 1939. It's hard to believe, but before Superman came on the scene, there was no such thing as a superhero. He started it all. And over the years, fans, commentators, movie reviewers, and more have noticed the striking similarities between Superman and Jesus. Superman, perhaps more than any other character ever created, is a literary Christ figure that is a, a fictional character made in the image of Jesus. The story of Superman is really a reflection of the gospel story. It's the story of a father in the heavens who sends his only son to earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men to be raised in a small town by adoptive parents and eventually save the world. But it's not enough to simply identify these similarities without asking what can we learn from them? How can Superman help us to better understand Jesus and draw us closer to him? To help answer that question, I'd, I'd like to zero in on just three of the plentiful parallels between Superman and our Savior. When Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster created the world's first superhero, they knew he couldn't be running around in tights and a cape 24 hours a day. He needed to have an ordinary life too, something that readers could relate to. And so that secret identity of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan, metropolitan newspaper was born. But beneath the glasses and the fedora hides his alter ego, Superman, who fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, in the American way. For those unfamiliar with the tale, just moments before the distant planet Krypton explodes, a scientist and visionary named Joel tells his infant son, places his infant son on the, in a rocket ship that is bound for Earth. A crash lands on the property of modest farmers Jonathan and Martha Kent, who raise the boy as their own in the rural Kansas town of Smallville. In a Superman movie, Man of Steel, Clark's Kryptonian father tells him, born on Krypton, and raised on earth, you had the best of both and were meant to be the bridge between two worlds. As Clark Kent, he can experience humanity firsthand. But as Superman, he can stand for truth and save the day. Of course, Superman's dual identity reminds us that our savior, the one true superhero, also has a dual nature. The Bible tells us that Jesus is both fully human and fully God. It says, for instance, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the answer to Solomon's age-old question. Will God really live on earth among people? The answer is yes. The God who spoke and the universe leapt into existence, stepped down from heaven and entered our world. He was cradled in the arms of a teenage virgin. The angels watched with wonder as the creator of the cosmos took his first steps. He must have been pushed around as a little boy in that neighborhood. He probably scraped his knees a dozen times on the rough streets of Nazareth. 
One thing's for sure, Jesus was completely divine, yet completely human at the same time. We say fully God, fully man. Isn't that the kind of hero we need? Uh, just man, Jesus could love us and sympathize with our plight, but he could never save us. As a just God, Jesus, it would be so far above and beyond us that we could never relate to him or approach him. God knew that we needed a savior that we could relate to and understand, but also one that had the power to save us from our own sins. The God-man, Jesus, is everything we need in a hero. He's strong enough to trust and near enough to touch. In addition to his split persona, Superman also mimics Jesus with his superpowers. Superman had a vast array of superpowers. He could fly, he had x-ray and laser vision, he could, had super speed, super hearing, even super breath. But one of the most remarkable of Superman's powers and abilities is his super strength. The old radio serial of the 1940s boasted that Superman could change the course of mighty rivers and bend steels in his bare hands. One of my favorite scenes from Superman the movie, which shows off Superman's flight, speed, and strength, begins with trouble atop the Daily Planet building and ends with Superman making his first heroic save. Hey, Jim! Boom! Excuse me. That's a bad outfit! <laughs> Boom! Okay, Breslau, move these people. <laughs> I've got you. You, you've got me. Who's got you? <laughs> oh, I, I can't believe it. I just, I just cannot believe it. He got her. Now, is it just me, or is that getting a little dated? Or maybe I'm just getting a little dated. Well, you see, with just one hand, Superman's able to catch the careening hospital helicopter and save the day. Of course, Superman's incredible superpowers points us to an even greater power. Did you know that God does all of his amazing feats with just one hand, too? Yes, it's true. A little girl and her mother were driving home from church one Sunday when they saw a rainbow stretched across the sky. The mother said, look at that beautiful rainbow God has painted for us. The little girl replied, and just think, Mommy, God did it all with his left hand. Puzzled, the mom asked, what makes you say that, sweetheart? The little girl smiled and said, well, the preacher just said that Jesus is sitting on his right hand. Okay, so Jesus may not be literally sitting on the right hand of God, but he, we know that even with one hand tied behind his back, Jesus isn't just more powerful than the locomotive. He's more powerful than anything we can ever imagine. Jesus not only possesses the power to turn water into wine, but he heals disease, casts out demons, and commands the wind and the waves. The Bible even says Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. 
Jesus has power over everything. Everything, as in all-powerful. Maybe you've never thought about it that way, but the fact that Jesus is supremely strong means a world of difference to you and me. Think back to the helicopter scene when Superman caught Lois in midair. He calmly reassured her, don't worry, miss, I've got you. When someone as powerful as Superman has you in his arms, what could you possibly have to worry about? Lois is safe and secure in the arms of her hero, and so are you. Jesus once said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In other words, don't worry. I've got you. The one who saved you is strong enough to keep you safe. The question is, do we really believe that? When you're facing unemployment and wondering where the next check will come from, when your marriage is failing and you think you've tried everything, when you've made a mess out of your life, when, when it feels like you're falling and there is no one to catch you, do you really believe it? Do you believe that our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty that there's nothing your God can't do? There's nothing he can't handle. There's no situation that's too difficult or dangerous. Regardless of the circumstances, God is in control. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. You're safe and you're secure. And there's just one more way that Superman reflects our Savior, and it's through his selfless personality. One of the things that makes Superman so super is his willingness to sacrifice himself for others. No story demonstrates that more clearly than the death of Superman. In November 1992, the latest issue stunned the comic book world. When news of Superman's impending death hit mainstream media, it was publicized as the end of the era. People lined up for blocks outside of comic book stores and waited for hours just to get a copy of the elusive Death of Superman issue, one that sold millions of copies. The remains the largest best-selling graphic novel ever. In the story that resulted in the death of Superman, a mysterious monster who'd been imprisoned in an abyss far below the surface of the earth breaks free and begins wreaking havoc all over the Midwest. He collapses an interstate overpass. He demolishes an 18-wheeler in a head-on collision with his fist and wanders from place to place, destroying whatever catches his eye. One of the other heroes who try and fail to stop him call him Doomsday. A bystander describes him as the devil incarnate ushering in the end of the world. Superman is the only hero strong enough to face the ferocious monster in a battle that stretches across six issues and several states. As their melee approaches Metropolis in order to emphasize the drama, the artist who drew the final comic made each panel a full-page picture. Metropolis becomes the epicenter for the fight of the ages. Streets are demolished and cars are hurled in the indestructible, as the indestructible fighters crash through buildings. Their final punches send shockwaves, shattering the glass from nearby windows. Bruised and bloody, Superman refused to give up. Finally, he puts every ounce of strength into one last blow. He and Doomsday collide and then collapse onto the broken pavement. On the last page, in a picture modeled after a famous sculpture of Mary holding the body of Jesus, Lois whispers to Superman, you stopped him, you saved us all. Then the page folded out as Superman breathed his last and gave up his spirit. That comic book led people to weep for the loss. 
After all, Superman was a hero for millions of people, adult and child alike. The image before them was unlike any that they'd seen before. There he was, broken and lifeless. This story and that image defined for many what it meant to be a hero. Of course, those reading the Bible read about a hero sent from above to save the world. And there's a connection. What Superman did in that comic book, Jesus did in reality. The monster may have been different, but the outcome was the same. A young boy was explaining basic Christian theology to his little sister. You see, it was Jesus' job to die for our sins. So it's our job to sin. And that's just what we do, isn't it? The Bible says, while we were still weak, at the right moment, Christ died for ungodly people. It isn't often that someone will die for a righteous person, though maybe some, someone might die to uh, uh, save a good person. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sin and to rescue us, not just for a time, but for eternity. That's the hero that we entrust our lives to, the hero who gave his life for us. We all need a hero. The amazing hero that Superman is in the comic books and cartoons, Jesus is in reality, and so much more. Just like the stories Jesus told, the story of Superman serves as a modern-day parable that points us to a God who loves us so much that he gave his only son to save the world. Maybe, maybe you could use a hero right now. Maybe you're in need of a savior, someone to rescue you and keep you safe. Believe me when I tell you that Jesus is the one my hope and prayer for you is that if you're ready to embrace Jesus as your own personal hero and savior, and you haven't done so already, on this day when we recall Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem amid shouts of Hosanna and the waving of palms, well, today is a fine day to do so. Actually, every day is a fine day to commit your life and spirit to Jesus Christ. During the coming week, Holy Week, we're challenged to face our sin, our brokenness, that leads us to the foot of the cross. And we are invited to leave our sin, our brokenness there. Because come Sunday morning, Easter morning, we will be Easter people, saved by the one we have claimed, Jesus Christ, the Savior of you and me and the whole world and beyond. I hope you'll join us next Sunday. Well, as God won't leave Jesus in the tomb, let's not leave Superman in death. Let's end with a better image, okay? You're as much a child of Earth now as you are of Krypton. You can embody the best of both worlds, the dream your mother and I dedicated our lives to preserve. The people of Earth are different from us, it's true. But ultimately, I believe that's a good thing. They won't necessarily make the same mistakes we did. Not if you guide them, Cal. Not if you give them hope. That's what this symbol means. The symbol of the House of El means hope. Embodied within that hope is the fundamental belief in the potential of every person to be a force for good. That's what you can bring them. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you. They will stumble. 
They will fall, but in time, they will join you when the sun comes. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. One last thing, the house of El. In Hebrew, El is related to God. A little bit of a spoiler alert. Amen. end of our Lenten journey, the superheroes have taught us, I hope we've learned together, Batman taught us about the need to be part of a church family, Spider-Man taught us about our need to be compassionate for others, Wonder Woman taught us about our need to stand in the, in the gap for justice and for love. Iron Man and Captain America taught us about that which equips us by God to protect us as we are reaching out to do all these things. Finally, today, Superman tells us, well, tells us that God is with us 
in physical form in Jesus Christ. The powers that we've talked about with all these superheroes are also the kinds of powers that the Holy Spirit gives each of us if we're willing to accept them. And you can, because God the Father is madly in love with each of you. And the grace of his Son in Jesus Christ is in abundance for you. And yes, that power of the Holy Spirit is there for you to claim today and for eternity. Amen. Amen.